Hello and welcome to the pilot episode for a potential new series on this channel. This series will focus on the vehicles in Hell Let Loose and we will look into their history, see how good they are, how fast they are and more importantly how quickly they make it round our racing track. This series will be called Axis and Alloys. We plan on adding in new things to this series including bringing in other content creators to see who is the best driver around. So if you like the sound of that, then please give this a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now let's get started with our first vehicle. The Blitz, manufactured by Germany's largest pre-World War II truck producer, Opel. It was actually named through a competition with its name meaning lightning. Now, this version of the Blitz you are seeing here is a 3.6 ton variant produced from 1939 to be used by the German war machine. Since the war is still ongoing and being British, it did take quite a bit of negotiation to get this truck from the Germans. Their conditions? I couldn't blow it up. And for some reason, whenever I would drive it, I needed to wear a German uniform and wear a mask of a typical young German soldier. Yeah. It's a bit strange though that we'd have to wear a German uniform though, as while this truck was built in the Oberwerk Brandenburg facilities, it's actually an American truck. Yes, the Americans are building vehicles for the Germans. Technically. You see, General Motors bought Opel in 1929, and it's even using engines extremely similar to the Chevrolet, to the point where broken down trucks can actually be fixed using parts from Chevrolet, GMC, and Bedford. But here I am in my brand spanking new Jerry uniform with this mask I'm calling Alfred. Now that I'm driving the Blitz, I have no idea why they picked this name as the winner of the competition. It's not exactly quick. We asked the Germans for the technical specs for this vehicle, but all we got back was a pisser, whatever that means. So we need to find out this vehicle's top speed by ourselves. Utah Beach. This road is La Madeleine, nearly a straight shot to the beach. Once we pass these crossroads, it leads onto the Voie de la Liberté. This will be the road we're using to see how quickly it goes from 0 to 60 kilometers an hour. Alright, let's go Blitz! Show us what you can do. Come on! Come on! 60 kilometers, come on, let's go! Let's go! Let's go? We, uh. I think he's stuck at 35 kilometers an hour. Right. Well, I think the Germans have some explaining to do. So yes, the Lightning has a top speed of 35 kilometers an hour, and it can reach that in a whopping 9.5 seconds. Maybe the Germans should think about changing the name from the Blitz to the Full Height. You might say that speed isn't necessarily an issue for this truck, I mean it's designed to move things around. This variant holds supplies that are used to build up fortifications. There's quite a bit of room in the back of this thing so it should be able to carry quite a bit. But you're wrong. Now you see these two supply crates to my side, they are the only things that will fit inside this big supply truck behind me. 
you can easily fit in at least another crate or maybe even four more. So why have they done this? There's a simple explanation why this vehicle can only carry these two small boxes around and it's balance. For some reason every single country involved in the war agreed that supply trucks can only carry these two boxes and nothing more. A pretty paltry amount. Even the soldiers agree on this. It's stupid. It's so stupid that after dropping these supplies, these vehicles just usually get abandoned. Then the vehicle gets upset and it explodes. Yes, this vehicle actually has feelings and after it's not been driven in a while, it decides to end itself. The other variant comes with an open top and it can carry its troops around. But this time it can use its entire carrying capacity instead of just a small amount. Let's touch on the handling. Oh, well, the steering is extremely tough and very heavy. This is not a nimble beast at all to turn. It's I don't know what the Germans were thinking. This this truck definitely needs some power steering. I mean, I expect every single German truck driver at the end of the war if, you know, if they're still about to have the arms the size of like Hercules or something. This is God, let's turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Yep, yeah, well, we made that corner. Just, just. Yeah, I. What are the Germans thinking? It does have one sort of good thing here is that you can pretty much drive through everything. Look at this fence. Boom! Straight through it. No issues at all. And even some trees, I could just go straight through some trees like this, like, like they're not even there. I, I don't know how the Germans pulled this off, but driving it, once you get used to the terrible handling and steering, it, you can pretty much go over or go through nearly everything in your path. Throughout all the driving I've done with this thing, I've not been able to tip it over once. Let's try it. Oh god. Look, straight over. No issues. Straight into the bush. Bounce off the bush. Any sort of mound or anything I've tried, I cannot tip this absolute monster over. Again, the Germans have done something extraordinary with this thing. Look at this. Full lock. It's like <laughs> how how is this thing not dippling over? Incredible. This thing is never going to get stuck. Now it's time to take it round our track. San Rioglis. This town was one of the first to be liberated during the Allied invasion of France. This is the location of our track. And here is the start of our track. We start near the church. We go down alongside it, round this quick long left bend, back down past the side of the church before we get to the trickiest corner, this S bend here. Then straight down this road, we take a left in the fork to get onto some dirt track, a quick left corner here at the building before we get to a blind hard left here. We head back towards San Maria Glees with a sweeping left, back into the main street with a quick left and then a blind hard right back to the start. Here we are on the starting line, ready to go. And we're off the slow acceleration of the truck, it's given us all the horsepower we can. We're going down the first straight past the church. Now we're coming up to the first major corner, the long sweeping left. The key to this corner is to keep it tight, keep the speed up. And as we exit the corner we're getting a little bit of lift 
on the left wheels but you know thanks to the german engineering the truck does not tip over and now we're going back down past the church on the opposite side we're keeping as much speed as possible here coming up to the trickiest and most difficult corner of the track which is this chicane and we have to slow down to get the lumbering beast through it for some reason whenever you get off the accelerator on this truck it just stops turning so it's difficult we clip the wall but then we're back down powering down this long straight Now we're coming up to the fork in the road, we need to keep to the left to keep as much speed as possible, that is key round here. Nicely done, but it's not looking very fast. And now we have a very quick sharp left corner here, done very nicely, very tidily. Keeping the truck up to speed here, we need to make up for any lost speed during that corner and now we have a blind sharp left, it can be quite difficult doing that corner right. I'm going down with the longest straights of the track, past the old lady house, going back into the town itself. Now we have a sharp left corner here, we can take it actually really quickly, it's done pretty nicely there. And now coming up to the last corner, quick sharp right and across the finish line just nearly and through the lamppost. <laughs> now I know you're dying to find out what time the Opel Blitz put around our track? Well, it's 3 minutes, 12 seconds, 0 0.09. And I cannot tell you if that's a good time or not, since we haven't put anything else around our track yet. So, yeah. What we know about the Opel Blitz is that it's dreadfully slow, terrible to drive, has extremely bad handling but it can never tip over it doesn't make full use of its carrying capacity uh, so it's a pretty terrible truck to drive and on that terrible news it's time to say thank you for watching if you like the video then please give it a like subscribe for more and leave a comment down below on what you think of the show and I'll see you hopefully on the next one